Hello, today I'm going to review the Common Exam 1 version A for Math 152 or Engineering Mathematics 2 for Texas A&M. Um, I was actually going over these exams and referencing the keys, but often the keys don't actually give you an explanation for uh, the answer to the problems. So I decided to make these videos to explain them and help out other people because I understand uh, Math 152 is actually a pretty difficult class and yeah and I don't want people to lose their mind over these answers so let's get started so compute this integral uh, x cubed and then root 2 plus x to the fourth dx so if we set up our integral right here so this is you can see that it's a composite function so we'll start off with u sub so we get u and we'll just say u is x fourth, and our du is equal to 4x to the third. We have our 4x to the third, and we can rewrite this as 4 over 4x to the third, because this simplifies down to 1. And we can call this u for now. And so now we have, so now what we can do is we need a 4. So we take out this 4, take it over here. Oops. Oh yeah, I forgot to write my integral sign too. We, then we have a 1 fourth, and now we have our 4x third and our dx, and then we have 1 fourth integral the square root of u du. And this is simple to uh, integrate. Whoa. This is simple to integrate. We just do u to the 1 half, and then that becomes u to the 3 halves over 3 over 2, or we could say. 2 over 3 u to the 3 halves. We have to multiply by our 1 fourth, and then that becomes 2 over 12 u 3 halves, or that becomes 1 over 6 u to the 3 halves plus c. And then we plug in back our, our u over here, so then we get 1 over 6 2 plus x fourth to the three halves plus c and that should be our answer and as we can see looking at the answer choices that would line up with c consider the region bounded by the curves y equals x cubed y equals 8 and the y-axis which of the following represents the volume of this region being rotated about the x-axis well first off let's start off with a graphical representation so the graph for y equals x cubed looks a little something like that. Not exactly, but you get the idea. If we say like x e y equals 8 is like right there, then that would mean that, and we have the y-axis, of course, that would mean that the area we're trying to find is this bounded region right here. So, and we know that our limits are going to be from this point here to this point here. And so this is obviously zero, of course, because uh, at for x cubed, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, and then it's the y-axis, so, you know. And so now we're trying to find which of these, uh, which of the integrals represents the volume rotating about the x-axis. So for this, we can use washer method, which is, uh, is pi, multiplied by the integral of r squared, which is our big radius, minus little r squared, which is our smaller radius. And this this comes from, you know, pi r squared, you know, because if you take each little sliver, rotate it about, and that's the area, and anyways, uh, you probably already know that. So, since if we're rotating about the x-axis, we use dx, the dx integral. And so our bigger radius is going to be this y equals 8. I guess I'll write it. And then this one is y equals x cubed. So our bigger radius is going to be y equals 8. So this is going to be 8 squared minus. And then naturally, our smaller radius is going to be our x cubed. So this is going to be x cubed squared. And so our limits for this, we know it's going to start at 0. But we need to find this point right here. So we just set 8 equal to x cubed 
because that's where this will find uh, when our y values are the same for both graphs. And you get, taking this cube root of both sides, you get 2 equal to x. So it's 0 to 2 dx. And so just, oh, and then we have to multiply by pi. And so this should be our answer. But we need to do a little bit of simplification because it's not clearly obvious right now. So uh, h squared is 64. And then x cubed squared is, you multiply the exponents and you get 8, I mean, you get, sorry, x to the 6, and an integral of that from 0 to 2, times pi, and dx. And if we look at our answer choices, that would line up with e. So how nice. Suppose the work required to stretch a spring from its natural length to 4 meters beyond its natural length is 16 joules. How much force is needed to hold the spring stretch 6 meters beyond its natural length? So first, this is going to be a work work and energy problem and with forces. So we know that our work is going to be equal to the integral of our force dx. And our, what is our force going to be here in this case? It'll be the uh, spring force. And we know the spring force is equal to kx. Or you could say k delta x because it's displacement from the natural length. And so thankfully this problem only gives us values in terms of our natural length. So, you know, it's uh, we don't need to necessarily stress over that. So we know that the work, our work here, is going to be 16. And that's equal to our spring force here, which is going to be the integral of kx dx. And we see that it's stretch a spring from its natural length to 4 meters beyond its natural length. So that means it will go from 0 to 4. And so we just solve this for our k. Because what we're trying to find is how much force. So we need to be using this spring force equation. And we need our k. Because we know our displacement, which is going to be 6 meters beyond its natural length. So let's solve this. So since k is a constant, we take that out. And we have 0 to 4 of x dx is equal to 16. And then this is just simple um, elementary you know, integral. So we got x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. And then that is going to be 16 over 2 minus 0 over 2, which is going to be 8. So that means that 16 is equal to 8k. And then therefore, k is equal to 2. Because 16 divided by 8, times both sides by 8, we get k is equal to 2. So now that we know that, this, uh, so our spring force over here, going to equal to our spring constant here, 2, multiplied by our, our 6 meters beyond its natural length, which is our displacement. So 6. So our spring force is going to equal 12 newtons. Which of the following represents the area bounded by the curves y equals x squared minus 2x and y equals 2x on the interval from x equals 1 to x equals 6? So, which of the following represents the area bounded by the curves y equals x squared minus 2x and y equals 2x on the interval from x equals 1 to x equals 6? So, with these types of problems, I usually like to make a, a little graphical representation Unless you can just think of it in your head, but um, you know, it's always nice to draw it out and you know completely make sure you got the right idea. So to so if we start off drawing these graphs, we can factor this first curve to get x minus two. So that gives us our two x intercepts. So we have zero and let's say this is about two, and we have this curve, and then y equals two x. So one would be like about like that slope. So if we say two, about like that slope. Yep. And so now we need to find the area bounded by these two curves from one all the way to six. So if we're saying this is two, we could say like about here is one, I guess. So we can say like, like that. 
So, and with our with our scale here, you notice that this this point right here is definitely not six. It'll probably be like I don't know, like three or something. I don't know. But so that means that we're gonna have to make two different integrals, one with this area and then one with this area over here. So let's find out what this point is really quick. So we just set these equal to each other. So x squared minus 2x equal to 2x. And so x squared minus 4x equal to 0. Take out a factor and x out, x minus 4. So we see that, it's, that they intersect at 0, which is true. And we also know that's going to intersect at 4. So this point is actually x equals 4. So now we have our limits for our graph, or sorry, for our integral. So we have the original from 1 to 4, which is going to be this top area, which is going to be our 2x minus our bottom area, which is going to be our x squared minus 2x dx. And we're going to add the other integral from 4 all the way to 6. And then we're just going to reverse the, the pattern. So now we have x squared minus 2x minus 2x. Because now the top graph here is going to be our x squared, our quadratic graph. Then the bottom is going to be our linear graph, dx. So there, this would be our answer. But we need to simplify a little more. So we can take out this parentheses and then make this a plus, and we get 2x, and then this would be, we could say, this is negative x squared plus 4x, oops. Or we can say 4x minus x squared, actually. And then down here, we can add these two terms, and then we get minus 4x dx for both. And so if we look back at our answer choices, do we see that anywhere? Well, I think we see it at E. We have 1 to 4, 4x minus x squared, plus from 4 to 6, x squared minus 4x. That would be E. Compute x cubed sine of x. So looking at the answer choices, we can see that we are going to use integration by parts. And I know it is the worst. It's so tedious and so slow and but you and so complicated but you do always get an answer so i'm going to go over both ways of integration by parts the slow way and the fast way um, the slow way you always get an answer it's foolproof um, but in the fast way you uh, there are certain functions that you can't use or sorry certain integrands you can't use uh, for that method because i'll explain later but so let's start off with the traditional method to build up a habit and yeah so all right, we have our integral here, x cubed sine of x. And so we can write off here to the side that we know that the integral of u prime v is equal to u times v minus the integral of u v prime. So using that, we can assign u and v, and we'll see. So in my experience, you want to have either your u or your v be one of these um, I don't know how to call them. It's like uh, x is your base to some uh, power. That's an integer. Because eventually, as you derive this term, it will get down to a constant. And then constants, you know, easy to uh, have in an integral because you can just take it out. So now we have our v as something. And then our v prime is going to equal to sine. So what is the integral of sine? Or what do you derive to get sine? Well, that would be negative cosine of x. So we plug in all of our stuff. So we get negative x cubed cosine of x minus the integral of 3x squared multiplied by negative cosine of x dx. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out this negative to just help us out later on. So it won't be, we don't have to go up the chain and figure out all the negatives and stuff. So I'm just going to do that. And there we go. And now we have to integrate this by parts again, of course. And now it's going to be 
3x squared, v prime is 6x, v is something, or v prime is cosine. And so what is the integral of cosine, or what do you derive to get cosine? And that is going to be sine of x. So then this becomes 3x squared sine of x minus the integral of 6x sine of x. So you see how this term keeps decreasing and eventually this next iteration inter the next this next iteration <laughs> it will be a constant which is a lot easier for us. So our u is going to be 6x v prime 6 v something v prime is sine of x and as we said before the if our v prime is sine of x then our v is equal to negative cosine of x. So now we just do this one more time, uh, the actual last time, and we get we get 6x, negative 6x cosine of x minus this integral of 6 negative cosine of x. And so once again, I'm going to take out this negative because it's just uh, gross and annoying. And let's see. Oh, I can do that. I take out this, erase those, and so six cosine. That's we can integrate that easy. And so if we actually, if we look at our notes here, the integral of this is going to be sine. So it's going to be six sine of x plus c. So now let's go back up the chain, starting with each of these actual like terms that aren't integrals, and just add them all up together. So we get negative x cubed cosine of x plus this term here, 3x squared sine of x. And we see this is going to be a negative. So all so everything past is going to be multiplied by a negative. So this will become positive, And then this will become negative. So that means plus 6x cosine of x minus 6 sine of x plus c. And I, the answer choices seem that they like to add the c at the front because it really doesn't matter where it goes because it's just some number, some integer. So here is our answer right there. So let's see. Let's check out the answer choices. So c minus x cubed. Uh, I'm just going to go by the signs we have. So minus there should be a plus, so that's not it. So you have minus, plus, plus, and then minus. So B seems to be our answer choice. How nice. So now I will go over and use the easy method. So let's do that. We don't need this. And not the easy method, I should say, more like the fast method. But so the way I like I learned it is so we have a derivative column and we have an integral column. And so we so one of our functions we derive until it becomes zero. And then the other column we integrate the other function for as long as the derivative column is in zero. So we have x cubed, three x squared, six x, six, and then zero. And so now we integrate sine of x for as long until that is not zero. So sine, integral of sine is negative cosine of x, and then this is negative sine of x, then this is cosine of x, this is sine of x. So the one also, if it's a little hard in your mind to figure it out, I like to just think about what do you derive to get the next term. So like, what do you derive to get sine, that would be negative cosine. What do you derive to get negative cosine, negative sine? Anyways, so now we just draw these arrows. We add a plus, we add a negative, we add a plus, we add a minus. I'm not exactly sure why this works, but it just does. So now we multiply the terms that are pointing to each other, and then we either add or subtract depending on what the signs say. So now this is x cubed, cosine of x. Then our next one, 
going to be minus a negative, so it's actually going to be plus, plus 3x squared sine of x, and then plus 6x cosine of x, and then minus 6 sine of x. And then, of course, you plus c, but I'll put the c at the front, and there we go. Oops. Then there we go. We got our answer once again, which does this line up? Negative plus plus negative. Yes. So we're all good.